just a, a brief update uh, what what we are doing in, in Thailand in J drones. Um, ah, always. Okay, so overall, uh, what I'm working on my free times, which everyone knows that I have a lot of that one, uh, we're working on, on some uh, 405 based uh, autopilots currently, making a small uh, autopilot that we can uh, run, for example, on those uh, balance bots and others, what Elbin is working. Uh, then the latest one uh, is, is uh, the H7 series. Uh, we are currently drawing a first one board for, for H7 series, which is, how would I say, um, fully can ahead kind of a board. Uh, there's going to be some PWM outputs, but not that much. And, uh, and, and, and everything on that one board is basically around can. Uh, then on UAV can, we have all kind of a works going on. I've been working quite long now with uh, Olli from German, and, and, and uh, he has the uh, UAV can for hobbyist project. So we've been bringing now some of the uh, boards on the market. I have my here, beautiful necklace in here. So uh, people later on can come and talk with me and we can, we can play with some of these ones. These are all basically uh, 103 based uh, STMs. Uh, they are uh, one or several boards which are 105, uh, similar what Pavel is making on his main project. But those are mainly on, uh, on a, a, a developer board stage and, and we're still looking at which one CPU would be the best one. Then on a, on a hardware vehicle size, uh, there are several projects of making multicopters, which is actually what I've started long, long ago. But we are not making um, really big ones. It's more like a, for my involvement with the World UAV Federation and others. And, and there's a need for all kinds of for education kits for, for global markets. So we will bring in that kind of, a, oh, we will bring in that kind of a copters quite soon. Then the other one, of course, Balance bot. Uh, Randy has been working already quite a lot. He's been seeing some of the, our frames already. Uh, Elbin, of course, we know that he's been working on the software side. So we are planning to bring that kind of uh, ready to, how we should actually say, it's not an RTF, it's RT. Uh, RT. <laughs> yeah, ready to roll. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> ready to roll uh, kind of a kit and also, uh, also just a do it yourself hobby kit which most likely will have their own custom built autopilot so we can get the IMUs uh, basically between the wheels and others. So the whole uh, uh, hardware has been really optimized for balance pod use. Then of course there are some some rovers similar what what the uh, Aeon Robotics is working on on on, on uh, uh, R2 rovers R ones and others but uh, we have some which are a little bigger ones. So for the UAV can I know this is this has been a hot hot topic for many many years. Me and Philip I don't know how many developer boards we have been making last what three years four years dozens. Five years. Yeah, something like that one. But anyway, finally, finally, it's starting to move ahead, which is really relieving. And uh, yeah, so, so so it's 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 now nice that we actually have some movement on that one. There's a, um, I have currently now probably. 20 different ports on standby, just waiting that we get the software on a certain level and, and, and uh, we get it in a master and then, then we can easier release it. There are uh, software that can be used a lot already, uh, especially thanks to, to Olli. He's been working a lot. I'm, if I remember correctly, next slide, I have actually a list of, of what software we have already working on, 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 on these small boards. But overall, if we're looking what kind of a boards there has been planned is, of course, different kind of a GPS, magnetometers, everyone likes um, uh, compasses, especially Philip. <laughs> so we always need to have a few more compasses. Uh, then all kind of a, 
uh, information displays uh, a bit like these ones. Again, come to look on my table. Uh, smaller one, bigger ones, it actually doesn't matter. Um, it's more like a for what we would need, what you all would like to see, and then we can look at what kind of things we actually can make. Uh, different kind of a light systems, like when we're talking about UAVs, bigger one, uh, fixed things and others, navigation lights, all that kind of stuff, because, you know, having them on canvas is easy to expand. So, so it's just a configuration and we can modify the system to be working totally different. Uh, obstacle sensors, uh, LADAR systems, I don't have that one now here with me, we didn't get the PCP already, but there's a, there's a one project uh, that I've uh, been working with the uh, TF Mini. Uh, Pierre was working, I, if I remember correctly. Uh, so there's going to be that kind of ready-made kits. Then all kind of energy sensors, uh, fuel flow sensors, uh, battery sensors and stuff like that a lot. ESCs, airspeeds, I think we have already three different airspeed modules basically ready. Uh, throttle control, which is, let's say, servo controls or more uh, towards ground vehicle uh, specific, specific uh, controller boards. Uh, boat systems, Randy's been playing a lot with the boats and sailboats, so we want to make the automatic jeeping and all that kind of stuff. So, so there's going to be different kind of rail systems and others. Now, for the the UAV, uh, well, the UAV can for hobbyists especially. Uh, there are already a bunch of software which is running on Arduino. It's not in a master. Uh, most, of, most of those softwares are in, in all its own repo, but, uh, and then it's also on Copter only. So that's something what, what uh, we are looking in, in the uh, following months, trying to get most of those ones on the master. Because anyways, they are pretty much uh, generic uh, modifications. So there's a GPS, magnetometer, barrow, Power brick softwares, uh, ESC actuator softwares, uh, different kind of uh, light systems, uh, um, LED displays, like this uh, OLED display, what I was showing earlier, um, UART bridge. Tom has been also working with some bridges, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Angle of attack, which is one of the latest one. Uh, then there's uh, the fun thing, which is like a, for just general play around, all kind of a stuffed in the one main firmware. Uh, Mavlink, of course, and, and, and then the SLCAN software. So those are already existing. Yes? Why is it called UCAN 4H? Uh, UAV can for hobbyists. <laughs> That's all this original name. I don't know why or whatever, but that's it's 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 it's, it's okay name. And, well, it's it's meant for hobbyists and meant for for DUI people and others. Well, so so yeah. What, why 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 why? Yeah, so when Ollie started this project, he was using Blue Pill with the yeah. 3 breakouts. Basically, was, this project started out being a collection of AliExpress paying good breakouts. Correct. For correct. For the, for the, for the can chip for the F-103, etc. So he's just taking existing sensors, feeding them into a breakout board to do the can translation and then feeding them into the pilot. So it started out being an obvious project. Yeah. Now it's actually developed into this custom build yeah. hardware and collection. So I'm, I'm, I'm the person who's bringing them on, on market. Yeah. Well, I, I have a plans to make uh, another kind of product name for this one. So there's going to be a use of uh, uh, 4H uh, products always on the market, but then there's going to be like a for more uh, professional style because what one thing... 4P. <laughs> well, yeah, well, actually, something like that one. Uh, the, the, the way, the reason why it still says like a hobbyist and stuff like that, because many of these small boards, they are meant to be as cheap as possible. There's no uh, proper uh, protections and things like that, which when, when you're doing a properly, you need to have those ones. So these one don't have. And it's, it's a, a little shame like, like uh, when we, 
when we made the, the original uh, multi V from uh, V nunchucks and others. So yeah, just like like uh, James said. Yes. Yeah, so you mentioned fuel flow sensors. I've been looking at those for the last few months, and uh, flow rates have been pretty low, like down uh, to say one to two liters per hour. Mm -hmm. A little bit similar kind of sensors. They are not cheap one when you want to go on low low flow rates. So that's that's a problem. So so we're working with a few companies that makes different kind of sensors and let's see if we can come up with a, a, a suitable solution for for the sensors. Any idea on time During this year? Well, we just actually uh, moved in a PR to add support for a fuel flow sensor. I've been working with Sepo and Buzz on that. And there was a link in the PR to the sensor that uh, has been used with it. Uh, what's the minimum fuel rate on that range of sensors, Buzz? Oh, it's rough. We, we go down to little leaders. Uh, it's, yeah, don't, don't even suspect something. Like it. Come talk to me and I'll... Yeah, so yeah. It only just added support last yeah. week for it. Most likely. Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 Flat out, it, it does uh, about a meter an hour. Okay, yeah. That's that's a good one. And yeah, uh, Ardu Pilot internal software is coming thanks to Dritz. He's been working a lot with a, a F103 peripheral software, and, and hopefully we're going to work a lot more during this weekend. So so yeah. Yeah, good. So we have already bootloaders, and there's there's some some uh, software already working, which is uh, coming directly from our master repo. So actually, it's not in the master, but it's in your in your branch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the boards, what I was showing in here, now they are a little bit bigger one over there. Uh, that one, the can expander board, is just a. One of the prototype systems that what we are playing, um, this one have four output, one inputs. Uh, it's it's mostly for just for me to play around and looking how it works and what all kind of things we can do with this one. But the overall idea is that especially on these kind of one or three based boards, there's only one CAN board outside on, on, from the microchip. So this one board can, uh, this one uh, driver chip can take a, a one input and split it a two uh, outputs. So if we want to have uh, one or three based boards and we still want to have redundant connections, we can use this driver chip instead of what we're using now. Uh, then if we want to have, let's say, not daisy chaining. This one could be used, for example, in a multicopter in a way that uh, every motor has their own uh, dedicated CAN bus. So, so only one between a uh, flight controller and, and uh, the, the expander, and then four going out from the, the, the expander. And also, this expander port is, is uh, powering up the UAV CAN uh, buses, because we know that we cannot draw too much power out from, from the autopilot. So this one splits, and there's a, there's a regulator port under it, which uh, provides uh, for the two left one and the two right ones, like three amps per bus. So if people are using a, a, let's say, powerful LEDs and stuff like that and don't want to power up properly their systems, they can get powers from, from this one. Yeah. That's good. Uh, um, I'm, I'm using a lot of GPIOs to control uh, relays. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Is that not for a UAV can part as well? Uh, yeah, well, the, that was uh, what I was earlier saying. In here, like, like uh, the, where? Release systems and others, basically, those are similar to relay systems. But yeah, can. Then there's a. If you don't make it, I will. <laughs> sure. Uh, there's a, a one board we saw also already already uh, 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 for for driving servos. We know that especially when we go in big one planes, uh, the servo issue is always a problem. So so there's a board already which have also internal uh, switching regulators. So we can we can go up to, what, 42 volts on the wing, 
and, and, and then we just lower down it to 5 to whatever. I have a power output uh, 5, 6, 7.2 and 8 volts on, on, on that one that one board on, on the lower left corner and it, it has a two servo outputs currently. Uh, we can have more if needed but current board have two. So then in for display small nice little uh, one inch info displays basically similar what we have been using already on the i2c on on, on uh, the current flight controllers but this is now fully on canvas different kind of generic sensors uh, compasses barrels airspeed sensors going on different kind of enclosures another generic node which is good for for hacking and, and, and uh, let's see if we're going to release this one on a bigger one market or is it just for, for a small audience to be seen. Some cases, I would definitely want to have some, some input from all of you that, okay, which kind of cases you would prefer to see and mount on your vehicles. I have some samples in here already, which I made quickly last week. So, so then people can see them in the real life. Thank you. That's about it. Come to bus me. All right, questions to Yanni. Hmm. I'm not the second money. <laughs> <laughs> you know the address. <laughs> <laughs> With the servo board, um, what power can supply and what amp? Uh, was it in two and a half amp currently? Per servo. Uh, board. Yeah. Which is two servos per board. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Yeah. If you if you need some heftier, can be done. Can be done. What's your thoughts on the like with the can? I noticed that if you got the breakout board, mm -hmm. it's going in a star topology for the can bus. Mm -hmm. uh, is that have you found how long you can go with the star type structure rather than daisy chaining? Uh, if if we have uh, those driver boards uh, on both ends, it can go up to one kilometer. So I think it's enough. It's enough. <laughs> <laughs> with, the, with the start topology, like you've got the driver and the breakouts, mm. so does that have the uh, drivers on each channel at the moment? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's four, four different channels. Okay, of course, downside is that also the one megabyte from the main, main channel is going to be split, uh, split between, between four channels. So it's 250 kilos per channel in that case. Yeah. Good for speakers to repeat the question so it gets on yeah. recorded on the video. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? All right. I'm done in that case. Okay. Oh. <laughs> right. well, Next. Thank you very much, Yanni. Leonard. John, uh, John Talent just turned up. Welcome, John. Uh, you made a name tag, and we have.